Titus chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. A couple things that we want to talk about here and what we just read. He calls himself a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. I want to talk about the acknowledging of the truth and, and what that is. It's simply acknowledging all of the Bible as it is, where it says it, to whom it says it to. It's truth. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, that that man of God may be made perfect, duly furnished unto all good works. What does that mean? That means all of your Bible technically is red letters. All of it. Every single word in your Bible, in the King James Bible, the scriptures there, that is the truth. It is the word of God. And God only tells us in one verse how to study it. 2 Timothy 2.50, rightly divine the word of truth. You need to read all of God's book and you need to acknowledge the truth that Paul is our apostle today. Israel's been set aside. It's fulfilling that prophecy in Hosea that we talked about weeks ago. And God is forming the church, the body of Christ. It's acknowledging that Jesus Christ was a minister unto the circumcision when he was here in his earthly ministry. It's acknowledging the fact that God ordained one guy, Saul, God's biggest enemy of his time, made him into Paul, changed his name in Acts 13, made him the apostle of the Gentiles, and revealed the mystery that Christ not only came and died for the sins of Israel's, but that he died for everybody. All nations, uncircumcised heathen Gentiles, people that knew nothing about the Old Testament. They were strangers from those covenants of promise, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. They were without Christ, without God, and had no hope in the world. But now, by the blood that Jesus Christ shed on that cross, God's innocent blood being made sin for us, atoning for all of your sins before you were even born until the day you die, forgiving you all trespasses for those that just believe and trust on the Lord Jesus Christ for their salvation. That truth wasn't revealed until you get to Paul's epistles. If you remove Paul's epistles from the Bible, there's no eternal security. There's a lot of things. There's no promise of eternity in heavenly places. Why? Because Peter and the 11, the 12 apostles, they're inheriting the kingdom of heaven here on earth. They're going to be here on earth forever. The church, the body of Christ, we're not inheriting the earth. We're inheriting heavenly places. This is a great mystery. I'm not speaking concerning of the church, the body of Christ. Paul writes, we are members of his flesh and of his bones. I don't think people can really truly wrap their minds around that. And that's a, a, an incredible thing that the Church of the Body of Christ has. 